Today, we're unboxing a keyboard, but not just any keyboard, but this one right here in particular. This is the Everest Max keyboard, and it's from a brand called Mountain Gear, if I'm not wrong. It says, reach your summit, because it's all about the mountain analogy, whatever. Uh, but basically, the reason this keyboard has been quite hyped is because it is not just a normal keyboard for gaming and stuff. It, it does that, it's mechanical, obviously, but it's also modular. It kind of has the features of, say, an Elgato Stream Deck and, you know, separate number pad, all included in this package. And you can adjust and mod this keyboard with different little modules, however you like. like I don't think they sell the bare keyboard without all the extra accessories but in this keyboard you not only get the keyboard itself which by nature it's just TKL but you also get a numpad you can attach the left or the right and you, you get this like a fancy media dock that allows you to control many different settings if you are a streamer for example that might be really useful for twitch streaming things and you can slap that into the top so it's very modular you can add a lot of different things and that's why everyone's so hyped about it and if you take a look at the box it's full of like a lot of different features and let me just read this to ensure that I don't miss out on anything. It's also hot swappable so while it's not really designed for pure keyboard enthusiasts you're probably better off building a custom keyboard by yourself. Uh, hot swappable might be very useful for people with particular switch tastes and I think they only offer cherry switches so you don't actually you don't actually really want to be using these switches you probably want to be switching them out but it's not cheap I think it's about 400 300 to 4, 400 to 500 Singapore dollars as is but you get a lot in the box so it's not all unreasonable. Shook. So it's a nice box magnetic flips up innovation aesthetics Customization, performance. To reach your summit, you need customized tools to take you to the top your way. So this keyboard right here is the Mountain Everest Max keyboard itself. This is the base of everything. It's quite light actually. I mean, it's got like an aluminium brush place plate, and but it's quite light. I don't, I don't like how light it is. It's, it's really quite light for a metal backplate keyboard. But it's got this beautiful finish. That's gorgeous. Uh, I'll maybe do a close up of it, but it's just pretty. It's like. This very interesting brushed finish, like a machine. We'll talk more about the keyboard typing experience itself because that's very important to people who watch this channel, obviously. This is an enthusiast keyboard page. We got our wrist rest here. That's magnetic noise. A little drawer in this box. Whoa, you get a little, little tiny drawer. And down here, you get all the accessories. That's really fancy. Like, that's really posh for a box for a keyboard. So that's nice to see. USB cable, media dock, numpad, and customize. So this is like a sample kit of different switches. We got this little box. We got USB-C cable. Oh, this is a thick, chunky cable. Wow, okay, so this is a USB-C male to USB-C female. I, this is like an extension cable. And then you've got your main USB-A to USB-C cable, so you can plug, oh, sorry. Sorry, this is, this is on loan. I shouldn't have torn that. That was an accident. Um, oops. But you got your main USB-C to USB-A cable there. And I'm just going to put this away and pretend like it never happened. <laughs> Next up, we have the media dock. And this one is pretty interesting. It's kind of like a attachment to the top of the keyboard that acts like a, some sort of media control center, which is going to be fun and nice, obviously, to have like that out. What's in the media dock? Ooh, nice. Ooh, ah, that's really quite cool. It's got a knob for like volume and controlling different things, and it's got play pause, your media control buttons, plug on the back, so that's how it attaches to the keyboard. So as I said, it's modular, and uh, these accessories are in charge of giving you that modularity to plug in these uh, media dock accessories, numpad, wherever you want, however you want it, so you can set it up as you so desire. So next up, in terms of the accessories, we have the numpad. So this is the Numpad and the, what's interesting about this numpad is it has a very similar thing to like the uh, Elgato Stream Deck where it's got like a little LCD behind four buttons. So you've got your normal numpad here, you've got your normal numpad here, which is cool. And then you've got four buttons that have screens behind them just like a Stream Deck. So you can have shortcuts or have it launch certain programs, have certain things for the numpad. That's actually quite interesting. Leave it to the side first and let's check out the final thing. So this pack is the five extra switches that they promised with it. But it's not five extra switches of the same type. It's actually five different switches for you to test out however you like. So you can determine like, eh, do I like the switches that I chose with this or should I get something else? You can. It's, it's to tell you that, hey, yeah, it's hot swappable. So it's actually a pretty interesting packaging here. What you get in here is you get a switch and keycap puller, which is the same as any average one you find on uh, Taobao, not a big deal. You get a normal escape keycap, 
replace the silver metallic escape keycap that it comes with by default. And then you've got your feet here. So these are the magnetic feet that they promised on the board where you can screw these out and then snap them in to change the height of the magnetic feet. So let me just do that for you right here. I think, yeah, okay, you don't actually have to screw them out, they're magnetic. So you just pull them out, you add this feet down here, snap it on, and then you snap the cover back on, the rubber, and it, it's now taller than before. Uh, what else? It comes with is five different switches, so you can test out the other switches that you can get with this keyboard, and if you feel like changing them out, you can. So these are all Cherry MX switches, if I'm not wrong. You have the old Cherry switches, we've got the MX Blues, we've got MX Reds, which is your normal linear, MX Speeds, which is even lighter, and also linear, and then we've got the MX Browns, which are disgusting, obviously. And then we've got like MX Pinks, yeah, these are, these are terrible. Ah, the pink! It's so pingy, why is it so pingy? Either way, uh, you know what I feel about Cherry MX switches, I don't think they're, they're really a good idea. If you, I were to swap out the switches on this keyboard, I'll probably go with something that's a bit more fancy if I'm spending $500 keyboard on a keyboard like this. And uh, yeah, the Cherry MX switches that it comes with is not the best. If I'm not wrong, this came with uh, grey switches. Yeah, no, these came with red switches because I wanted linear switches and out of all the Cherry MX switches that you can get, well, my favourite would be the black hyperglides, but the reds are decent. So that's why I asked for the red switches. And this is what they had available. I think I've asked for the greys, like, um, MX Speeds if possible. I really do like this box though. It's like a, it's like a chest of drawers. So once it's fully assembled, let's do a physical tour, a quick one of the entirety of the keyboard. So we've got a numpad on the left side right here. I have it set up this way. The beauty of modularity is you can have the numpad over on the right side. Uh, it kind of just clicks in like this. It's pretty much hot swap as well. The switches in here are hot swap as well. So you can even buy a bare bones kit so you can pick and choose which accessories you want. With keycaps you want to use on this, you can use whatever you want on these. And you can also use whatever switches you want on these. If I'm not wrong, these are, unfortunately, they've got north-facing LEDs, so that might be a bit of an interference issues for some people there. But I think it's PCB-mounted LEDs, so you shouldn't have too much of an interference with your keycaps, so that's fine. I really do like the brush aluminum finish. Like, not just the brush aluminum finish all around, but the finish underneath the keyboards, underneath the key switches. That plate finish is absolutely phenomenally gorgeous. Like, the finish here, I mean, I'll try to get it close up later, but it's just so pretty. The way it's done, it's very, very nice. It's very, very good to look at. In my opinion, it's quite a pretty keyboard, ignoring the rather excessive RGB. Uh, we've got the numpad here, but back to the design tour. We've got the wrist rest, which is magnetic. It's also optional, but it comes with the Everest Max. And also, we've got a media control unit. So these are the main accessories it has now. I'm quite sure they'll probably release more. Uh, they'll probably release more accessories as time goes on, but they, these are pretty much all the accessories you can get with this keyboard for now. It's got a nice uh, Mountain Gear logo, and the keycaps themselves, if I'm not wrong, they don't really feel like PBT, although they might be. They are dual shot, they're not very thick, so if you get the bare bones kit, you probably can upgrade that. So that's pretty interesting. It's got a floating keycap design. I, I don't really like floating keycap designs. I kind of like my keyboards with a, with a kind of a, a surrounding case these days because it makes it sound better and I feel like it looks a bit more neat than a, a floating keycap design. But floating keycap designs are, are good for cleaning, very easy to clean under the keycap, which, is, which might be a good or bad thing depending on who you are. Uh, also, we got the media control unit, which I keep talking about, but I don't actually cover. Well, it has a bunch of features. Most of the features only get fully accessible once you install the Basecamp software. Uh, the Basecamp software is also where you can do a bunch of different things, like set the shortcut keys here, which, you know, I'm guessing you know what they do. So by default, it's Task Manager, uh, File Explorer, and opening up uh, opening up the Mountain Gear website so you can download the software. And this also puts your computer to sleep, so I won't be hitting that right now. They're pretty decent buttons. They're like clicky, but they're not, they're not really the, the most satisfying switches out there. Okay. Doesn't matter though, it just reminds me of like an Elgato Stream Deck. And I would see this actually be useful for someone who wants a lot of macros or who wants to add a little bit of extra shortcuts for streaming, video editing, whatever it is, you might see some use for something like this. The media control unit is also very powerful. It doesn't just control media with like your play, pause, skip buttons, which are here, you even have a mute button. But you also have other things like you can set and choose which profile of keyboard you want because you can set up different profiles in the Mountain Gear software. And if you have a custom mode, you can set a custom mode in the Mountain 
in the base cam software and activate it inside the media control unit. You can see your APM. So if you're playing StarCraft, you can see how fast you're typing or gaming. Uh, you can also see your PC info. So if you want to see your CPU, GPU usage, you can. Obviously, you have to install this software for this to work properly because I'm not using 0% of my CPU. Oh, oh, it's working. See, 7% CPU, 6% CPU usage right now. As you can see there, that's actually quite cool. I don't know whether it's going to be really helpful uh, for most people. If your, problem, your PC is having some issues with frame drops or stuttering, maybe the ability to constantly observe what percentage of RAM usage or CPU usage or GPU usage is. I think for most people, this is just something cool to look at and uh, why not, right? So you got other things as well as controlling RGB brightness on the fly and you can also adjust your lighting so you can swap between different modes. So we're in color wave, tornado, breathing, reactive, so it reacts to how you type, matrix, custom, yeti mode, that's quite nice, and off, which is the best because I don't like RGB. Those are the different modes you can set up and you can do it all in the media control unit, but obviously you can add even more controllability and adjustments to the Basecam software. And I've got to be honest with you, the Basecam software looks really, really nice. The thing about the Basecam software is that I have not used it long enough to know whether it will have crashing issues like none other than our favorite Logitech G Hub, which is terrible. I don't know if it's too terrible. I haven't used it in a year ever since it caused me so many nightmarish issues. But the Logitech G Hub software is pretty bad and a lot of mice and keyboard softwares crash often. So I don't know whether it crashes because I haven't, I don't get, this is not a long-term keeper unit, I can't tell you about that. But it seems very, very clean. The interface is quite pretty and uh, it looks good. You can do all your different things that you want. So after typing on this for a bit, here's what I think. The Everest Max from Mountain Gear is definitely an interesting keyboard for, I think, a lot of people. As far as mainstream mass-produced keyboards go, the typing experience is quite decent. Now, it's a floating keycap design and it's not going to be a bouncy gasket-mounted typing experience because there's a very solid aluminum backplate. But I think for most people, this wouldn't be an issue. One thing that I do appreciate is the wrist rest being very soft, squishy, and supportive. This I definitely love. And the stabilizers, as far as a mainstream mass-produced keyboard goes, is really quite good. It's not the best thing ever made but it is really quite good it has minimal amounts of rattle it's quite well controlled and it doesn't tick which is important so as far as mainstream keyboard stabilizers go it's, it's quite it's quite decent even on the numpad itself so that's nice to see uh, but whether this keyboard really you know does perform well enough for a custom keyboard enthusiast the answer is definitely no if you're a keyboard enthusiast just for the keyboard side of things because you're a keyboard nerd uh, this probably won't satisfy you but I think if you like the modularity and the other features that this keyboard has but you also have like custom keyboards with their fancy modern stabilizers and their you know, really really interesting unique switches and all, all that stuff the better option will probably be to get this keyboard but in its bare bones kit form where you can put your own switches where you can put your own keycaps and do everything obviously this is hot swap so you can buy this and then swap the switches out and the keycaps out yourself if so desired but if you're planning to swap the switches out anyway because you don't like cherry switches like me then the bare bone kits will probably make a lot more sense than actually just buying the keyboard uh, with all the things installed. But for a mainstream gamer, it makes a lot of sense. I think the Everest Max is a very interesting keyboard for a mainstream gamer. But the thing is, you have to be quite a wealthy one or someone who's really willing to part with their money. That's coming in at about 500 Singapore dollars for the Everest Max. It's, uh, it's very, very, very expensive. Maybe the Everest Core instead if you don't need some of the accessories. Either way though, this was an interesting product. I'm just going to end this video off here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to help this channel and the algorithm, please. Or don't. It's up to you. But if you appreciate 
the content that I'm putting out, if you appreciate the work that I put into my videos and you think it's good and deserves support, please just hit the like button and type in a random comment to help the algorithm. I'll see you guys next time, which will probably be Saturday. And this one is a video that you don't want to miss because I'll be comparing the MW65 with the Ambition 67 with the DNA65, three acrylic stack keyboards that a lot of people actually do like.